This painting tutorial will show you how to mix tints and how to mix shades with four base colors. If you love learning about art, support this public school teacher's side hustle and hit that subscribe button. As far as materials, I'm using a palette with a cover and I'm gonna do black and white first. I'm using a square paintbrush because I'm painting in a square shape. You can also use a round, a cup of water because you will be cleaning your brush between most of your shades in your tents and a paper towel. Color number one, we're gonna do grayscale. Um, and so we're gonna start with black and when you add white, it's going to of course make gray. When painting, a tint is a base color mixed with white. So we're gonna fill in our base color as black and then gradually add white to create the lighter version of our monochromatic grayscale. This exercise, I will be taking the black paint and putting it in a separate paint well right next door and adding white paint to create my range of tints in just this one area. It's important that I clean my brush because black, of course, is a very dominant color and white is the complete opposite. So I'm gonna clean my brush, wipe it on a paper towel, and then with a clean brush, I'm gonna scoop a little bit of white paint into that paint well, and I'm gonna mix it up to create my first tint. Now, this should be really dark gray. The goal here is to create at least six tints. And so we wanna kind of start small and it needs to not be black, but it needs to be that darkest gray. Don't be afraid to go back and add a little bit more black or white as you get used to mixing your color. Also keep in mind the brand of paint you use is going to vary a lot with how it works. The exact pigment of the color, if it's thick or thin. I'm using Blickrylics, which is a brand that is very affordable for schools and it does run a little bit thin or watery. So if you're using a thicker body paint, you might get a different experience. That's why this exercise is great, even if you're an experienced, experienced painter, because every brand is going to be different. Adding a little bit more white here, you can see that this is more of a medium dark gray. Exercise here, I'm gonna scoop a little bit of white paint, and this time I didn't clean my brush, but notice how I'm just using one side. And now I'm really getting into my medium to medium light gray. No surprise here, I'm leaning a little bit dark. I did start with black, and allegedly my next step would be lightest gray before white. So I have kind of ran out of space for that. So I'm just gonna make my sections a little bit smaller. And you can see how I'm mixing just a little bit at a time. I'm not mixing all of the paint, because I really want that light area gradually getting lighter here. I'm gonna leave a little bit more space. And this is just an exercise. Um, I'm gonna clean my brush to make sure that those lightest grays aren't affected by the darker gray on my brush. And keeping a clean and neat palette is so important when you're mixing different colors. Let's see if this is my lightest gray. And you can see my brush is kind of streaky. So let me press down to my palette a little bit, smooth that out. And I really think I could go a couple more lighter, but my next step is mixing white. So I'm going to finish up here with just the solid white. See what a jump that is. Definitely at least one more tint would have been helpful. Okay, so adding white, my gray tints. Let's repeat this exercise, creating gray, but this time we're gonna focus on shades. Shades, when painting, is a base color where you add black to get the darker shade. So as I did before, I'm gonna paint the base color white and then I'm gonna scoop white into a well. I'm gonna clean my brush because again, black and white are opposites. Make sure it's clean. And I'm gonna add the tiniest bit of black paint to create my first shade of gray. I'm gonna add a little bit more. And again, this exercise is all about experimenting and finding uh, your color harmonies and figuring things out based on the brand and the materials. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna fill this space here with my lightest shade. It's a little bit dark. I probably could have added a little bit less black, clean my brush, dip just a little bit of black again, and I'm gonna continue down my value scale to get those medium grays. I'm gonna not go quite as slow since you've seen me do this before. And I really do think I'm catching some of those grays that I missed the first time. So as I'm going towards the center here, this needs to be more medium gray. And as I tell my students, mixing black and white is the same, but different. So you can see that it is the same uh, value scale with very similar shades and tints, but starting with white and starting with black is a very different experience. Just a little bit of black paint will change it. And that will be true for all the other colors that you practice with as well. 
Let's keep mixing our shades here, adding just a little bit of black as we go, and don't be afraid to further extend from your value scale paper. Now, as I said before, this is the cheapest paper ever. This is a printout on computer paper. Really, you can't find a worse painting surface than this. So you're gonna see that the paper is gonna wrinkle. That is why having a thick paper with acrylic is important, or a canvas. So again, my students will be using this for practice. You could do this in a thicker page sketchbook and draw your own lines, but I prefer to give my students just a printout and we do this exercise together. I'm getting that last black square here. I think I could probably go a little bit darker, so I'll extend with my solid black paint. Um, and then I'm gonna move on to my second color. Let's do red, and this is the Blickrylic brand, and I believe it's called Fire Red. Uh, not to be confused with magenta, which uh, is a little bit more pink. And before I move on, I'm gonna clean out those gray areas. What I don't wanna do is mix black and white together, because as you already know, that makes gray. Keeping a clean and tidy palette is important when mixing colors so that your colors don't get muddy. We're gonna start with our red tints, which of course will be pink because we're adding our base color red with white. Like you saw me do before, I'm gonna simply paint this one section with my base color red, trying very hard to stay inside the lines, which can be tricky. And then we're going to gradually add white paint to go from red to dark pink, medium pink, all the way to light. I'm gonna speed things up a little bit because you've seen me do this before, but adding white to red is going to be a different experience, of course, than adding white to black. So each color is going to have its own unique experience. You can see that cleaning my brush um, is an important step, especially when dipping in other colors. You want your palette to be really organized. You don't wanna do any of the mixing in the base colors. You wanna save that for your mixing area. And it's okay to mix a little bit on the paper, but the best thing you can do is mix everything all together in that one paint well. So I'm continuing my steps of painting, washing my brush, wiping it clean, mixing a little white paint all the way until I get to my lightest pink. And then my final section is going to be white. Okay, so there it is, a nice progression of red tints. Let's move on to red shades. And mixing shades is when you use a base color, and for this example, it will be red, and you mix black to get the darker version of that color. So just like red turns to pink, um, red is going to be affected by the black paint, and for this brand, this particular combination, it's going to have kind of a brownish red effect, so kind of like your maroon or your crimson, burgundy, that sort of color. Some painters don't use black paint, so a good solution would be to mix um, like a neutral by making a brown. You can do that by mixing color complements together or you can do that by mixing um, blue with uh, brown. But for this exercise, we're just gonna add a little bit of black to the red. Now, I struggle with mixing shades and you can see me adding a little bit more red paint there because I tend to overdo it. Unlike with white, a little bit of black paint goes such a long way. And so you want to make a tiny amount of black paint first, uh, or else your shades are gonna go too dark too fast. So you want a full range of those shades, and you can see the big difference between my base color here um, and how quickly I went too dark. I will say while I'm doing this, it's thunder sleeting outside. We're having some really crazy weather in Oklahoma. So I was a little bit stressed out because I'm sitting here at work while like ice and hail and thunder sleets coming down. So this isn't my best example. Um, I do have a better example and I will pop that image here so that you can see what a better range of shades looks like. And this is still not a perfect example. That jump from my base color to that first shade is always just a little too much. Um, so that would be something I would focus on practicing with. Okay, let's do another color. We're gonna do four colors total, and this is Ultramarine Blue. Um, I use this brand in my classroom because it's very affordable and the color payout is pretty good. I will say this blue is a little disappointing. No offense, Blick, um, but this brand is good for the classroom, um, and I certainly would use this brand at home as well, but the blue is a little liquidy. It's a little thin. Um, adding white to it does make a huge difference as you see me doing here. So we're gonna speed things up quite a lot because this is the same technique. Yes, every color will react differently, but you're going to be adding white gradually until you go all the way to white. 
So double time, mixing white. Did I get a little bit of red in there? Maybe, you can tell it's a little bit more of a periwinkle or purple color, not the end of the world, uh, but that's why keeping a clean palette is so important. Washing the brush, adding more white, gradually, gradually, gradually until you fade to white. Again, if you um, need to add blue to balance things out, go for it. And one thing I'm doing here is adding a separate little section. So I just randomly have six rectangles. That does not mean that is all it takes to get to white. So I'm going to make my tint here uh, kind of do halvesies, so go half in the rectangle so that I can have that lightest tint, like white with just a little bit of blue. Let's do this again with shades, and I will not have better luck. I'll go ahead and tell you, mixing my shades, um, what's going to happen here is I have my blue paint. I'm putting some blue in a separate paint well. I'm going to add some black, and you're going to see immediately that I added too much. So this one's okay. I'm basically going to end up having just like three shades before it just looks too dark. So my advice is instead of using a scoop, like you would use a scoop of white paint, I would use just like dip your brush just like the very end of the bristles or maybe like the corner. And here I have like what? Blue, my first shade. And do you see how these are very similar? And then that one's almost black. It's not horrible, but I really was looking for, you know, five shades or at least four, and I really think I only got three. So if you're doing this and you struggle with either shades or tints, just use that as a learning experience. Let's end here with green, and this is a pre-mixed green, um, and it's one of my favorites. It's called Thalo Green. Notice that interesting spelling, and Thalo Green is a really beautiful, cool green, and it is pre-mixed. My students will be making their own green using yellow and blue, uh, but for this exercise, I just think this is a really pretty color that I have on hand. Um, you could do yellow because, of course, if you're doing the primary colors, red, yellow, blue, yellow mixes some beautiful tints, but yellow mixed with black is just a bad idea, in my opinion. It makes a really weird green color, and so we're going to use this green just for more practice practice. Okay, so let's see if I can do better with my shades. I rush through my tints. As you can see, I tints are easy for me, so I have my six tints there. Um, and so mixing a little bit of black as I go, let's see if I can get um, that full range of shades instead of just like three. So doing a better job here, gradually adding black, and I am editing out a lot of my like washing of my brush and wiping it on the paper towel. So this video of course would be much longer if I showed you all of that. Slowed it back down here so you could see I did improve. I do have more distinct shades and this green gets really dark when you add black to it. Okay, I feel like I had really good practice mixing shades and tints of four distinct colors. If you're wondering what to do with all of these practices, try out these lessons that I have on how to paint animals and how to paint portraits using shades and tints of one color. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And find my website, thatartteacher.com, for my full-length lesson plans and student examples. And my Instagram, thatartteacher underscore machado, to see what my students are up to in my classroom.